who am I really? Who am I in times of crisis? Who am I in times of joy? Who am I really? Or am I who they say that I am? No, you have to find out who you are specifically. And that takes you spending time alone with you. You finding out your likes, your dislikes. You finding out your flaws and working on your flaws. You finding out your strength and really leaning into those strengths so that you can be more confident in what it is that you are aiming to do. Greetings, 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 and welcome to When the Moment Chooses You. I am your host, Coach Charlene, and I am excited to continue this journey on finding your voice. But today, I wanted to kind of shift it in a different direction. I want this one to really focus in on whether you are allowing the enemy within to outshine the inner me within. Are you allowing those voices of the enemy within to override the greatness that you have on the inside of you where the inner me cannot shine? Well, that's what we're going to be talking today about because you know what? I've been talking about finding your voice and sharing your story and making sure that you tell your story from the mountaintop, so to speak. And I wanted to draw back a little bit because it's not really easy to find your voice. It really is not easy whatsoever. It actually takes a lot of concentrated effort, a lot of self-work so that you can really find your true authentic voice. And so I wanted to um, revisit this topic with you because we are constantly surrounded by so many voices. We have voices in media. We have voices in politics. We have voices of our friends, the voices of our um, but those that are in authority over us, uh, voices of our families, voices of our parents and voices in your head at the same time, which is you talking to yourself as well. And then those negative voices, that enemy within, you know, Les Brown, I shared before, said that if there's no enemy within, the enemy without can do you no harm. So all of us, I truly believe because we are living we have those voices that speak to us and some voices are good and some are not so great. Now, the reason why I'm saying this, those inner thoughts that sometimes we speak out, those inner critics, you know, those are the ones that I'm talking about because those are the ones that can sabotage your voice and cause you to think that you are insignificant that you are not enough, that what you have to say does not really matter to anybody, that no one needs to hear your story. Nobody wants to hear what you've been through or what you've conquered. You know, it's that that voice right there that tries to cause you to shrink, cause you to draw back, cause you to just say, you know what? No, I'm good. I'll just continue doing what I'm doing. So we're constantly surrounded by so many voices. So it's so important for you to discern whose voice are you listening to? Whose voice are you reacting or you're responding to? We all have those voices. You know those voices. Let me give you a few examples. If you are getting ready to do something courageous, or let's say that you you did a speaking engagement or they, they ask you to present something at work or in the community, whatever it is, they ask you to do something that you are not normally doing. I tell you, those voices are going to begin to start racing in and saying that you're not enough. And there's other people that are qualified that should be doing this. And when you do do it, you'll begin to start second guessing yourself. Oh my gosh, is this really what I'm supposed to be doing? Wow, I didn't do that great. Man, I mean, you know how we do it. We beat ourselves up. We beat ourselves up so much. And that's why this self-work, this journey is so important for you to cultivate and to begin to build up that inner me on the inside of you. You see, the way that you see yourself today is not necessarily the person that you see in the future. When you think about vision, 
envision the ability to see beyond your eyes. Who I am today is not the person that I am going to be in the future. Yes, yeah, it's me, Charlene, but I'm talking about when you have a vision for your life, when you have a vision for yourself and you can see it beyond your eyes, your current condition may not necessarily be there. You may not be the type of person that is going to be required in 10 years for you to be. I hope you understand that because that's really, really powerful because a lot of times when we get assignments, when you discover who you are, when you recognize what you're supposed to be doing, some of us need a lot of work on becoming the person that we need to be in order to get to where we are headed. So there's some work, there's a process, and that's why I talk about self-manifestation. If you have this wonderful thing that you're about to do, and you can see it on the inside, and you can see that for your future, but you still struggle with the bad attitude and being negative toward people, et cetera, there's some work to do there because you have to become a different person for that vision of yourself that you see in the future. I hope you understand what I'm saying on that because a lot of people try to go ahead and, okay, I'm going to discover it. Let me go for it and become it and start speaking and doing all this stuff. And then you find out that their brand is not lining up with their message. And so that is so not okay. We want you to make sure that your brand is congruent with the things that you're doing, where you can be fully confident to deliver the message, to deliver the product, to deliver whatever it is that you have to serve to humanity. So let's talk about that a little bit more. Those self-limiting beliefs. I am not enough. You know, those voices like that. When you go to write a book or whatever it is, you begin to start saying, who am I to write a book? Uh, I don't know what to say. Or, you know, um, I didn't even go to college or um, I didn't even graduate or I know nothing about this. You know, all of the negative voices in your head that you have to learn how to silence. And the reason why I'm talking about this and I want you to focus in on this because you cannot allow the enemy within to be louder than your inner me within. Your inner me, I call it the inner coach. And Charlene, when I feel myself drifting off to try to go to a negative place, because it doesn't matter how skilled, how brilliant, how many talks, how many things that you've done, that voice will come in because it's just part of life. But when you know who you are and you know what your message is, you are not defined by anybody else's reaction to what your story has to bring or to contribute. You continue to stay in your lane and continue to perfect the message that you've been given and keep moving forward, pressing through the voices in your own head about you not being enough or you not doing a great job or you, um, you're not strong enough to do what you need to do, or you're not confident enough to do what you do. You have to, those negative things, those self-limiting beliefs, that inner critic within that's trying to get you to become mute so that you can't impact those people that you were called to, you have to silence that voice and you silence it with that inner me, that inner coach on the inside of you. So what are some strategies? What are some tips for us to be able to cultivate that inner me because the enemy within is going to speak. That is just natural. Just don't even try to say it'll never happen. It will happen because we're human and we're flawed and we're frail, we're frail at times. So it's very important for us to be able to speak to our soul, our inner me, our inner coach on the inside so that we can then encourage ourselves in those moments where you need to be encouraged. Inspire ourselves when you need to be inspired. So first of all, I think one of the top keys to cultivating the inner me, I know it's what I've done, is to get to know who you are. Who am I really? 
Who am I in times of crisis? Who am I in times of joy? Who am I really? Or am I who they say that I am? No, you have to find out who you are specifically. And that takes you spending time alone with you. You finding out your likes, your dislikes, you finding out your flaws and working on your flaws, you finding out your strength and really leaning into those strengths so that you can be more confident in what it is that you are aiming to do. That is so critically important for you to find out who you are first. Who is your identity? Who are you? Where are you going? Where are you headed? What do you love? What do you dislike? Find out who you are. What is it that makes you wake up in the morning? What is it that gives you energy? You know, that's what I'm talking about because that goes with you finding your voice and releasing your story. The second thing I would encourage you to do is to silence that enemy within. And I silence it with declarations because, you know, words do carry weight. So if I constantly listen to those negative voices all along and I sit there and I keep letting it just go, letting your mind and your thoughts just flood, um, your brain space, your real estate up there, you're going to be really defeated. So you want to make sure that you are using declarations or affirmations, whatever you want to call them, because your words do carry weight. And in the Christian world, we know that faith comes by hearing. You become what you think about all the time. So if I'm, say that I've just had a situation where, you know, I did something I've never done before. And so now this enemy within is trying to tell me so much negative so much negativity because it's designed to cause you to stay normal, to stay in your comfort zone, to not move out and do the things that's in your heart to do. It's designed that inner me within is designed to cause you to stay mediocre and you to stay in your comfort zone and not be uncomfortable at all. But I'm telling you, You have to silence that voice and begin to declare those different things that you see that you are. If you're struggling with a low self-esteem and um, not feeling good about how you look, you better start talking to yourself and saying that I am beautiful. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. If you are feeling inadequate, you need to start that inner coaching. You need to start saying, I am enough. If you're not feeling like you're creative at all, you know what? I am creative. You got to start saying things like, I'm, I'm capable. I am chosen. This moment chose me. This message chose me. And I'm going to declare this message until I can't declare it anymore. See that those words of affirmation, those words of belief, it actually, before you know it, as you continue to start declaring it and affirming those things that you want to become, you will begin to get so strong on the inside and so fortified on the inside. So when the enemy within begins to speak, your inner coach within will begin to start combating that which was said. And your inner coach is going to become so loud that you won't even listen to the voice of the enemy any longer. You can hear it as so small whisper over there that you don't even, you're not even bothered with it. Whereas sometimes, like even now for some people, that voice is so loud, they can't hear their inner me, their inner me their greatness speak to them, their inner coach speak to them, their inner critic is speaking so loud that they can't hear this over here, this inner me, this powerful voice that's trying to tell you that you are enough, that you are the one that's called for this moment, that your voice really does matter, that who you are is so important for those that you're called to. You see the difference. So you want to begin to do declarations, affirmations. That's number two. And then the third one, you have got to monitor your associations. Who are you around? Who's speaking life into you? Who's blowing oxygen in you? Or who's sucking life out of you? 
Who is it? I want you to beware of the associations, the associations that feed your assignment is good. Go ahead. You can have those assets in your life, but those associations that you're dealing with that absolutely deplete you, you need to get rid of them. <laughs> like one time I heard um, Bishop T.D. Jakes say that, you know, there's like three types of people. There's assets, there's liabilities, and there's zeros. And he said, the assets are wonderful. Those are those people in your life that feed you. You know, they're like mentors or they're like uh, counselors or pastors or business partners that have been there before and know how to take you there. It's those people that are positive, that are constantly nourishing you and giving you life. Now, it might not necessarily be a comfortable conversation because uh, true mentors tell you the truth about who you are. You don't want somebody just stroking you saying, oh, you're doing a great job all the time. You want a true mentor that will tell you, you know what, Charlene, you're a little off on this right now. And those are those trusting relationships. Those are assets. Those are people or things that help you to become who you were destined to be. And then you have those liabilities. Oh my gosh, liabilities. They are those ones that are like leeches that suck the very life out of you. When you leave their presence, your energy is sapped. So that is what I'm talking about. I know I'm being very dramatic about that, but so many of us leave so many uh, liabilities in our lives that we can't really see our true assets. And then he said something about zeros. And I was like, okay, what are zeros? Well, he said that zeros, they don't add to you or they don't take away from you, but they start eating at your assets. I was like, oh my God, those are those kind of people that when you finally get the courage to step out on your assignment, step out on faith, step out and write your book, step out and begin to share your story, they began to start attacking those that were ordained to be in your life so that you can become who you were destined to be. And so they start talking about maybe that mentor or trying to get you to see that person in a negative light when that person has been sent as a gift into your life to build you up, to help you to get to where you need to be. So they don't add to you. They don't take away from you. But when they start eating at your assets, you better get rid of them. Just like we don't want liabilities in our lives. We want to get rid of those liability. It's the same thing with relationships. Those relationships, those associations that are not adding value into our lives, we need to gradually let them go. Some of them immediately let them go. So those are my three little tips for building that inner me. Your voice is so important. There's somebody waiting to hear what you have to say. There is. Your energy and your heartbeats should be spent on gaining clarity of who you are, your assignment, and who you be, you intend to impact. The inner me needs you to discover who you are and then just boldly decide to become it. That voice of your inner me has to become so profoundly stronger than that enemy within that when that voice comes, even when you begin to start stepping out and doing different things that you haven't done before, you'll feel the um, you'll feel the um, the energy from that, and sometimes feels like ner your nerves are talking, your butterflies are flying, your some of the anxiety tries to creep up on you. But I'm telling you, as you continue to develop your inner me, your inner me will be able to speak so much louder than the enemy within you. And those that you are called to serve will be touched by your life and by your ability to stand firm and do your assignment as you totally know that your heartbeats are trying to get you to do. So anyway, I hope that spoke to you. I would love for you to comment in the comment section. Let me know if you struggle 
with any of those enemy within, those self-limiting beliefs? And how did you overcome them? How did you combat them? I would love to hear some of the strategies that you use to silence that inner, that enemy within. Thank you so much for listening and I'll see you on the next segment. 